Hello everyone, I know it's been a while. Uh, hey, fudge in hell, it's been a while. Almost a week without any uploads. But that's primarily because I have been working every single day at my job. But anyway, enough of me. We're here to talk about Mike. Which, by the way, if you haven't already, check out his channel, like his videos, subscribe and give him some love. He definitely deserves it. He's an awesome YouTuber. It makes some really, and I mean really cool stuff. But he recently... He recently came out with a video of building an SSTO in career mode. Now, as we all know, in order to make an SSTO fly, it has to look cool and, of course, be painted red, but that's, you know, just to make it go faster. We all know this. However, in his video, he was trying to do the rule of thumb of 1000 Delta V for space fuel and 4000 Delta V for just regular atmospheric fuel. Didn't quite work, and I'll be the first to say that it's, it's definitely something to play around with. It's, it's, more, of a, it's, it's more like guidelines than actually rules. So I thought to myself, could I, is there a way that I could make this better? Now let's get one thing straight. I love the aesthetic looks. He made a really great design, but is it possible? Is it just, just possible for us to squeeze a little bit more out of this design? Now, what can I tell from this design is that he's actually trying to get, uh, he's trying to get the cockpit, docking port, passenger module, and the space plane probe core. These, are, these four parts are pretty much his cargo. This is, this right here, his, this is what he's trying to get up there. That's it. So pretty much just these four parts. A simple uh, passenger transport, basically. Now the way the, the way I re rearrange them is just my personal preference. I like the I like to think of the fact that they dock they dock up here, right? And the uh, the Kerbals get to choose to either go to the cockpit or go to the passenger side. And of course the probe core blocks off any real entrance, so they wouldn't be able to pass through it. You know, if that if that was the case, this is kind of like a dead end. So I usually put that right there. But that's just my personal preference anyway so we're looking at about 4.6 4 4.6 4 tons yeah 4.6 tons okay now we're going to try to use only what he used on his craft because i don't want to do anything that might be uh something that he has not yet unlocked in his uh uh, 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 uh career mode now one thing that i have noticed for sure is that he is using something called restock and what restock does is it actually Actually changes a lot a lot of the the way the parts look but sadly I've also realized and found out the hard way that it also changes uh, a lot of the parts drag boxes it is a beautiful mod it's a beautiful mod so if you're just if you're just in it to, to make beautiful things then gosh damn it you keep on being your bad self and make them beautiful things but for me personally I like to try to keep it stock so that if anybody's following along they can actually recreate what I'm making and that's one of the reasons why I took restock off it's sad I know. I missed that mod so much. It was so pretty. All right, so five tons, huh? Pretty much five tons uh, orbit. So he was using a rapier. Okay, the rapier. He had some fuel tanks. Okay, and let's see what we can do here. We're going to put on this. Oh, just a little thing. A and it can have fuel in it. Don't worry about it. You know, it's it's not going to be... It's not going to make it or break it once we're done. Well, you'll see. Okay, just put a little thing right there. Pop. Okay, let's close that off. Nice aerodynamic slickiness. Remember when you're talking about drag for K. P1, uh, anything that has a green node sticking out and then not closed off will create tremendous amount of drag. You want to try to, when you go through your SSTO designs, you want to try to uh, cap off any green nodes you see that are popping up, because if you don't, you're going to regret it. Now, I do use two mods. I use, of course, Kerbal uh, Engineer Redux, and I use something called RCS Build Aid, which is really cool because it tells you, gives you a little red ball and tells you uh, the center of mass where it's going to be once that fuel is used up. Check it out up up just like that up up all right this will definitely help you when you're trying to balance your craft because you want to keep that red ball and the yellow ball as close together as possible all right so i'm going to try to put some fuel tanks on here and see what we got right off the bat i'm going to grab some uh, engines he had rapiers let's do that oh wait he didn't have these big ones. He had the, looks like, I think he, he unlocked, yeah, these right here. Okay, I'm gonna put that right there, pop, okay. He also said that he knows about the fact that the shock cone air intake can power up to four rapiers safely and six rapiers uh, unsafely. <laughs> <clears throat> but he said he liked putting shock cones on the ids uh, just to make it look cool. So we're gonna do what he does. Try to keep it uh, as true to his design, design uh, philosophy as possible. Now I already know that we're going to need some liquid fuel. So for this design, I'm actually going to add uh, the small little fuel tanks. Where the 
frick are they? It would help if I was looking in the right category to begin with. There we are. I'll take these bad boys and duplicate them a couple times. Holding the Alt key and click. Turn that around. Hold down Alt so it can snap there. Boom. Now, the reason why I use Kerbal Engineer Redux is because of the fact that you have the little button here that says Atmo. If you turn it off, you can get a readout for uh, space. If you're in space, if you turn it on, you can get a readout if you're in atmosphere. Okay. Now, of course, if you open this up, you can get all a whole bunch of cool stuff and get mock and altitude and all this other jet. But it's pretty good if you don't, you know, if you don't want to mess around with all that. You can go ahead and hit compact and boom. I mean, these numbers right here are great. Now, you're definitely not going to need a whole lot of wings with this, but of course, the rule of cool does apply. So we'll put just enough wings to make it look cool. Now, for the tail section, he was using a look like a standard canard so we'll go ahead and do that i'm going to put mine on top of the flatter edge and then just bring it back kind of a space shuttle vibe all right we'll put the uh the uh, little tilt there like that the uh dihedral it'll bring the wings and we'll just ever so gently tilt them up like this if i can i try to line these up right here i try to line them up they'll either be a little lower or a little higher but i try to line them up because the more lined up you have them like this is it's, it's more stability but it's pretty it's it's i think this will be okay i think i think this will work let's check our numbers again for Kerbal's Kerbal Engineer. Toggle mode and put it on air breathing. Now once these are both on air breathing mode, we can go ahead and turn off the uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer tanks. And apparently we have a crap ton of Delta V for the uh, air breathing mode only. 4,300 Delta V. Now we want at least a thousand Delta V in order to get into space. So in order to figure that out, we have to take the fuel out of the liquid fuel tanks and switch our rapier modes back to closed cycle mode. All right, so our Delta V is still at 1,191, which is a lot of fuel. So this thing's going to have a lot of fuel left over to maneuver with once in space. That's a lot. So we're we're going to have plenty of fuel. When we get up there, we're not only, we're not only going to have plenty of fuel to maneuver in space, but once we come back to Kerbin, we're going to have plenty of fuel to fly around. Of course, we'll do our little uh, nose trick. We'll close off these green nodes right here on the rapiers to help with drag. Looking at the gears that he had, it looks like he had those two available we'll go ahead and use those okay so i have not yet put rcs on here and i haven't put the lights or the flags or anything on here this is just to see if we can get what he was trying to get up there with a lot less fuel and of course i'm convinced that we only need one rapier for this because a twr of over one is a lot now i do realize that i put a video out there saying that over one is a good rule of thumb this is for of course for new guys and gals and peoples of all ages and stuff if the, if you're just if you're new to this if you're brand new to this you know over one will help you with a lot of uh difficulties and stuff but you can go as low as a twr of 0.35 or even 0.30 i've gone that i've gone i've gone even lower but it just took forever to get into orbit it took forever to accelerate and all that good jazz so usually i just say for for beginners just look for one or close to, to close to one twr now one thing i did forget to put on here was a means to generate power and, of course, our re-entry probe core. I mean, because the craft is so small, our options are extremely limited here. So I'm going to grab a service bay and put it back here. I know that looks really dumb. However, the service bay uh, is, well, it's, it, it's a service bay. <laughs> Duh. You can put stuff in it and close it up and it'll, it will create a safe spot that will keep everything from creating drag or experiencing heat. Now I forget what kind of probe core he had unlocked, but we'll grab this one just in case. Hopefully he has that one unlocked, but we'll just go ahead and we'll tilt that down like that. Get a little probe core, uh, re-entry probe core thing going on. Not sure what he's got for power, but I do know that the Z100 rechargeable batteries are pretty much the first thing you unlock. And of course I did see him put a solar panel doohickey on here a little circle there going on that way when they open up these can come out to the bow oh, what the hell okay not to make sure that the radial symmetry is not there all right so let's test it out on our maiden flight we'll go ahead and fill her up this is meant to this is meant as a test there we go and i'm sure they have all of their stuff with them that's great center of mass hasn't really changed all that much we'll just save it as untitled spacecraft and off she goes Oh yeah, she's she's extremely close to center of mass and center of uh, woo 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 woo. Now because she's so small with so much thrust, we're gonna level up, level her out and just let it go. 
It, it, this actually might not work. It, she might, she might pop. She might pop. We may have to point her nose up to 10 degrees. Look at the clouds. I love it. I love it. Not getting any heat warnings yet. Oh, there she goes. Our hot dogs of death have appeared. I think she's gonna pop. Ah, uh, she might pop. She might pop. I think she's gonna pop. She's gonna pop. No? No? No, we're getting higher, so she's getting cooler, but still... Oh... No, I think we're good. Yeah. Almost, we're at 16,000 meters per second. Still only on rapiers and fuel. Yeah, we're good. All right, now we're actually going to go ahead and hit probe right now because we're at 45,000 apoapsis. Usually about 43, 45,000 apoapsis. I usually try to go for probe right in. Our engines just exploded. I mean, you know, in a good way. <laughs> and uh, apoapsis is already at 73,000. We're going to cut that off. Still a burning ball of flames. Go ahead, fast forward, checking out our full crew. All right, about 20 seconds out. Just getting ready here. We got so much TWR. Burning into orbit, backing up, throttle down, throttle down, throttle down. Time to apoapsis. I try to keep as close to zero as possible. And we are at in orbit. 74,000 meter orbit, 424 meters per second left over. We actually have a, a nice chunk of liquid fuel left over for if we want to when we return to be able to fly around. Now that's a good thing uh, to test out before we end this video. Oh, that's right. Let's do this first, right? Nice, very nice. All right, let's go ahead and burn back to uh, uh, just re-entry test. Okay, we're gonna hit prograde right now. Click on the prograde icon, straighten up a little bit. Okay, good. And now we're going to hit the zero key that will change our control from the cockpit over to the reentry probe core. And it'll keep us in this position the entire way down. Hopefully the dihedral design will help stabilize the craft on the way down because just having a standard canard for a tail is, is, is tricky. Not impossible, but definitely tricky. Okay, so even though it's technically nose heavy, it does have some, it does have a moderate, moderate enough control. I'm, I'm, I'm not being, you know, it's not like the nose is so heavy I can't pitch up. So I think we're good. I think we're good. There we go. Nice landing here. If we could just, you know, fucking stop. All right. I think we got a good landing. Sweet. This, this works. This works. So, um, I'm convinced that you don't need, uh, two engines. You could probably just use one, but there you go. There you go, there you have it. Now I will be making a video about how to build and fly SSTOs in the future to update the one that's already out there. But the Delta V rule of having 4,000 Delta V for atmospheric flight and then about 1,000 Delta V for vacuum flight or the switch between jets and rockets, that rule of thumb only works for a flight path or a flight plan that licks the uh, the, the ocean basically or, or stays the craft stays at sea level. That flight path basically consists of the craft staying at sea level up to a certain speed before just letting it naturally climb into space. When I say naturally climb, I don't mean to tilt the nose up or down at all. Just basically put it on SAS and leave it alone. For smaller vehicles, as we have just witnessed, you don't want to keep it 
uh, level for too long, but for very, very large, heavy vehicles, you sort of want to try to dip the nose down a little bit and build up more and more speed while you're at sea level, about, you know, 100 or 150 meters above, above the ocean. And then once your large, very heavy SSTO reaches a certain speed, whether it be 500 meters per second or 600 meters per second, uh, then you just let it go, put the sass on and just let it go, naturally climb up all the way up and gain more and more speed as it gets up to, uh, to, to uh, well, basically where it kicks in from uh, air breathing mode into glow cycle mode. With that type of flight path, having 4,000 Delta V at least, or 3,500 Delta V at least, I've gone I've gone as, as low as almost 3,200 Delta V for uh, atmosphere, for the atmosphere part of the journey, for the flight plan of the SSTO, before finally it switches over to rockets. And then when it switches over to rockets, then you, then you need at least 900 to 1,000 Delta V. This will help ensure that you have some Delta V left over while you're in orbit to do maneuvers in space but yeah i plan on making a video that will that will talk more into depth and detail and basically be a reversion of the how to ssto video that i made a while back and if you liked what you saw please leave a like and if you really 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 liked what you saw consider subscribing we uh upload often mostly kerbal space program we also have a membership program if you're interested if you become a member you get cool little emojis and badges next to your name and whatnot pretty cool check it out but anyway i'm sorry for all the noise it's uh it's kind of busy around here and my microphone's picking up everything but i love you all stay safe and i'll see you in the next video bye for now bye bye